Well, I certainly wouldn't say that he uh, he bailed, uh, but Gareth Bale is no longer with the team he used to be with. Uh, back to uh, a squad that certainly he's familiar with, and two guys you're familiar with, Dan Riccio and Alex Sixero. Tottenham Hotspurs now have Gareth Bale back. Um, Dan, not so much about having him back. I'm sure they're happy, but what did you make of how all of this played out? Well, I, I just didn't think that there was going to be a suitor for Gareth Bale, given the money and the term that uh, he has still got around for him. But you can see now with the quotes coming out of Real Madrid, just how badly they needed a breakup between those two. And it's, you know, it's, it's a nice story to have him back at Spurs. He played well under Jose Mourinho at Real Madrid as well. So he'll get that opportunity. He's obviously not the same player he was when he was the most expensive transfer in football to Real Madrid. But 31-year-old Gareth Bale, I guess we're, we're all kind of wondering, you know, where is, his, where is his meter at? How much is he giving these days? Because he was out golfing and sleeping on the bench with Real Madrid. So <laughs> you wonder if his, if his head is, and heart is still in the game. Well, and he's gone from Madrid where the fans hated him so much yeah. and they wanted him gone and they just, they, they, they just didn't want to deal with him anymore. And now he's going to a situation – uh, back at Spurs in London, Gene, where it's the complete opposite. Tottenham fans love him. He's familiar with the team. It seems like he, him and Jose Mourinho have uh, a good connection so far. I mean, we're not going to see him play for a little while. He's dealing with a knee injury, so it's going to be maybe next month before he plays. Um, but it seems like Gareth Bale, at, at you know, at you know, in his early 30s, he hasn't played a lot of soccer of late, and you know, I think we tend to forget as poorly as it went in his final couple of years in Real Madrid. This guy has won La Liga titles. He has won four Champions Leagues. He has won Spanish Cups. He scored a lot of goals for Real Madrid. He's still a really good player, and he's really invigorated, I think, that fan base. So I think it's good for the game that he is back in the Premier League, and he's back at a spot where he can be most comfortable. It's a one-year loan deal. Uh, but you, you know, if he stays healthy, he plays a full year with Harry Kane and Sung Hun Min. Um, you know, he's going to get a really good contract next summer, whether it's from Spurs or someone else. But he's still one of the more dynamic players in the game. Um, it was long overdue. I mean, China wanted him last year and Real Madrid didn't let him go. But this is good for soccer. It's good for the Premier League. And it's really good for Spurs, who now they have, you know, one of the better front threes really in the league. One match uh, into the Premier League uh, start, and already things are crumbling at Man United. Uh, Alex, uh, it seems to be that the centre-back is the issue. Is, is that the way you see it? There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Um, there's a number of issues at Manchester United, and you know the fact that a lot of people are panicking at Old Trafford one game in uh, is not terribly surprising because they lost to you know a good Crystal Palace team. Um, but United's issues have been the same um, – pretty much since Sir Alex Ferguson left. And, you know, in February and March when the shutdown came and United had a chance to kind of evaluate what they needed going forward, transfer specifically, I, to me, center back would be at the top of the list. Um, and where teams like Liverpool and Chelsea and Arsenal and Tottenham have made uh, really good signings. You know, United have had one signing so far, a midfielder, and Donny van de Beek, and all the rumors we're hearing right now, guys, is they're looking at Usman Dembele, who's an attacking player at Barcelona, and they're looking at uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin at, at Everton, who is an attacking player, and Jaden Sancho at Borussia Dortmund. And I can't understand why we're not seeing more rumors of United to maybe not the most world-class center backs in, you know, that are out there, but my God, you know, Victor Lindelof for a couple of years now has not been able to cut it. And he just had a terrible match in United's opener. I mean, he makes Harry Maguire look like a $15 million player <laughs> compared to the whatever they ended up spending on him a couple of years ago. So, you know, unless they figure that position out, it's pretty clear. They're not going to contend for the title. It's not their only problem, but they need someone else to come in right now who is of high quality to play beside Harry Maguire, and I'm not sure they'll be able to get that guy in before the transfer window closes in the first week of October. Chelsea, uh, Dan, has the most expensive goalkeeper in the world, but maybe not the right goalkeeper. <laughs> what issue do they have uh, that they need to, to figure out early on in the season? Well, obviously, Kepa is a big problem, and they're trying to, and they have been rectifying that. But when they spend so much money on him and it just hasn't worked out. I mean, it's, it's been a, a calamity of errors. I don't think Frank Lampard has worked well with Kepa as well at different points. 
last year when he benched him, you wondered if it really crushed the kid's confidence. And that's never a good sign. He hasn't been able to find it. He had the mistake against Liverpool over the weekend. That can happen if Chelsea is really going to be challenging for the top four this year. But they've also got a center back problem. Manchester City's also got a center back problem. Uh, th- there's a lot of teams, and this is probably the reason Liverpool uh, are still favorites, but Virgil van Dijk gives them uh, that, that solidity in the, in the center of defense that basically all of their contenders are currently trying to look for. And Chelsea, with Mendy coming in, you think that they've got their goalkeeper situation figured out, but center backs are still an issue for them, and defending is going to be an issue for them. Everton is uh, one of five clubs to uh, start the season at 2-0, and oh, Dan. Um, does that surprise you? It does a little bit. I, I thought Carletto was kind of done. Carlo Ancelotti is, uh, you know, he, he had a rough go at Napoli. He had a rough go at Bayern Munich. And he had a kind of a penchant for neutering uh, offensive talents. Yet here we are through the first couple of games and Richarlison, Calvert-Lewin, and James Rodriguez have worked together like an absolute charm. And I wonder how much longer that's going to continue. But they have been arguably the best front three through the first couple of games. Alex, uh, Monday, Liverpool, Arsenal. I mean, uh, not a lot needs to be said, but go ahead and say something about uh, what will be a premier matchup in the premiership towards the latter part or the beginning of next week. Yeah, it should be a great match. Both teams have won both of their matches so far. You know, Liverpool, we saw Thiago play 45 minutes in the second half in the win over Chelsea uh, over the weekend. And it kind of seemed like he had been playing in Jurgen Klopp's system for a couple years. He immediately was one of the best players on the field. Then out of nowhere, Liverpool goes and spends 40 million euros on the you know Portuguese attacker Diego Jota from Wolves, who again kind of fits the mold of these attackers that Klopp and Liverpool wants, like Mane and all of those guys. He is quick. He's got a really good shot. He is really smart. So good piece of business from Liverpool. I think they've looked sharp early on. And Arsenal too. I mean, I think it's been workmanlike for Mikel Arteta's side and I think there are some who are still a little skeptical about just how good of a season they they can have but Obama Yang signs the long-term contract that is great for the club I think there's still some transfer business a couple of players will probably come out and you know they're still chasing a couple of players but I think a, a win or just a good result against Liverpool on Monday I think would do a lot for those who don't really feel that Arsenal are maybe in that tier with the Chelsea's and the Manchester United's, uh, but it should be a great match. I mean, Liverpool last year feasted on, they, they beat everyone, including the top teams, but Arsenal comes in with a ton of confidence. So you got two teams, both with six points. It should be a beauty on Monday. And uh, with the spike in coronavirus cases in England, uh, match time was supposed to be 8.15 uh, PM. They've moved it to eight because the pubs have to close by 10. So they want everyone to be able to watch it and then get home wherever you guys watch it. Alex and Dan, uh, thanks for your time. Thank you.